to our guests, uh, Banang Ba and Dr. Alex Cannon. Here's to Philip, here's to DJ Puzzle, Frederick Tran, and our whole team behind the scenes here at the Diasporic Vietnamese Artist Network and our production of Accented. Here's to all of you watching. Cheers. <laughs> Talk to your questions in the Q&A, please. We have a few there already. And I think, uh, Philip, you're gonna ask the first one. Yes, <clears throat> we, we wanted to keep it conversational and light to start off since we just had a very, you know, semi-serious conversation. But um, for both Jivan and uh, Alex, you know, what, well, first, who, who or what do you like to dance to? And then if you could speak to your musical influences, either through the music you play or what it is that you dance to. Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Jivan Yes, um, so I see the question that, um, from TT Nguyen, right? Um, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, for all the comment on my music. First of uh, first of all, um, so let's do you feel this. Okay. Um, we all all see the question here, right? All of us. <laughs> yeah, the question: is Who or what do you dance to? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We'll get to the long one in a bit, you know, from TT shout outs. <laughs> but yeah, who is it that you dance to? Well, uh, what music or whose music I dance to? Well, believe it or not, I really like to dance in the music of the um, uh, spiritual music from North of Vietnam, Ho Dong. If you you know that, is it like the rhythm? It, And then you hear the almost like the heartbeat, and it's it's it's, it's crazy to hear that. Um, but it's actually um, I listen to music of uh, the um, what's the movie Hans Zimmer, that um, the very famous um, uh, film uh, composer, and he actually have the music that he wrote for Black Hawk Down, that he actually have that kind of same rhythm. And when I listen to that, like, holy cow, this is a rhythm from Vietnam that way, 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 way for the spiritual music. And this is music that written for Black Hawk Down that his Hans Zimmer used it. And it's exactly the same. And so that that's the type of music that I dance to. That is such a sophisticated answer because my answer is I dance to Save Your Tears by The Weeknd and Ariana Grande because... <laughs> and a half year old daughter is obsessed with this song she says alexa play save your tears etc except uh, she can barely speak english at this point so alexa never recognizes what's going on and then we have to listen to the song five or six times but she's a beautiful performative dancer and we have a great time dancing to save your tears um also baby shark that that works too in my household <laughs> alex what do you dance to missy elliott okay all right <laughs> <laughs> um, predominantly, uh, maybe that dates me slightly, uh, but also um, Suboy, if anybody knows Suboy, um, the, the, the Vietnamese rapper, I mean, her, her stuff is incredibly danceable um, and also sort of musically quite rich as well. She incorporates a lot of kind of, kind of traditional tunes strategically um, into her works in order to tell stories. Well, you know, I'm fascinated about the, this, this issue of the relationship between contemporary music and all of its varieties of forms and what we've been talking about in the last two segments about traditional and classical Vietnamese music. Is there any intersection between the two? Does the contemporary scene borrow from the traditional and vice versa? Oh, absolutely. There's a tremendous amount of collaboration between the two. And I think as you know, it's 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 important to to kind of break this distinction down a little bit. I mean, we sort of talk about traditional music and, and contemporary music, and I even invoke this sometimes, you know, when, when I talk about this. But, you know, that, that distinction has been imposed. Um, you know, one can say it's a, a product of, of colonization, perhaps, you know, when the French came in and, and said, okay, well, you know, we're bringing the modern music and, you know, what you, what you play here is, is traditional. Um, but, you know, even when that happened in the late 19th, early 20th centuries, musicians, you know, started to incorporate French tunes into traditional music. You can still hear Tino Rossi tunes in Southern Vietnamese traditional music. 
today. Tunes that have been around for a hundred years and musicians are still playing them and you know, incorporating them into and uh, folk song performances. Um, and then you look at the work of, of, of Chiba Nain. I mean, she's you know, um, bringing together lots of different sounds and it's, you know, in many ways it's all traditional. Um, what she's doing, the, 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 the approach that she takes to musical practice is drawing on what she hears and, and incorporating it into what she knows. <laughs> yeah, so Alex already shared that, but um, it's the same thing, like, it's go, go back. It's not only that the, um, we incorporate and integrate the traditional music with the, with the different music genres outside of Vietnam to create something contemporary. But music from like uh, Debussy, for example, contains a lot of music from the, you know, diatonic, uh, um, pentatonic uh, music from Vietnam after he he visited Indochina at the time and he wrote a lot of music um, with that kind of influence. And then um, there's many things else that, for example, like, well, when I listen to the um, uh, Gnosium number no. three, or music like uh, Eric Satie's, the minimalist the, um, composers from French, and I feel the, 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 the heartbeat, I feel the, the texture of the Vietnamese dan bow. Or for example, George Gershwin, um, the, um, summer times that when I listen to it, I immediately feel that I have to create the summer times that in Saigon or in Hanoi where the, when it's so hot that the weather, I feel like we can use a knife and cut it into coof and then bring it around like that. Um, so so he, the, the song becomes a vehicle for me to share the sounds and textures and the feeling of us of Vietnamese and the feeling of the summer in Vietnam, whereas we even can hear the sounds of the crickets and you know all of that. But um, yeah, so then it becomes something contemporary. So I, I, I guess. Yeah, thank, thank you all both for that answer. I, I want to bring it back to uh, Titi's question um, on sort of this uh, this desire to pass on Vietnamese history. I mean, Ji Nan, you kind of just talked about the collect collectivity of, of Vietnamese um, music and tradition. Um, her question is, do you feel this dichotomy of loneliness or solitude um, against the, the, or with this desire to pass on the history uh, um, and as, as well as to be a part of this collective in, in your work? Well, I, I, Definitely, when I first head out to work, and when I first arrived to the first move to the United States, I, I couldn't find anyone who do who do traditional music as a profession, you know, as a career, like like full time musician or uh, artist like me, because um, I have to say that it's go back that of um, the reason that we we came here because our parents and many of, of our parents and the first generation of vietnamese uh, american generation came here and then had to spend time to really work and raise family and then the second generation would be uh, doctors uh, lawyers and you know do anything that earn money um so I'm very fortunate that I came here uh, married to a uh, Vietnamese uh, American that he came here as a you know teenagers um, and so he he's a he's an engineer so he can he can afford basicness for us so that I can continue to do my work in the music. But then I do feel um, very lonely at first because uh, um, in many way, I I couldn't find anyone who do music, traditional music at a full time. But more, I feel more lonely because believe me or not, um, even up to now, many Americans do not know about our culture, do not know about our communities. 
so so that's why I I I that's loneliness that's kind of like it's not not only in the professional uh, work that I do but also in the cultural when I have to be the only one who present music on the main um, American music um, but then um, with a platform like like this we are able to share more and more and and I think that um, it's each time when I participate into um, program like this, I be I would be able to I would be able and we all be able to let people know more. And then I have uh, and then I have more students as well that who want to learn and more people who understand about the music and cultures and they invite us to to share more. So so yes, from the loneliness of everything together and now i i have more people to be with me and and share culture help people to understand about our differences um we have a question from the audience uh unfortunately anonymous does dj puzzle have a youtube or instagram page so hopefully dj puzzle can let us know i know he has a soundcloud uh, that he can hopefully drop in the chat. We also have another really cool question from someone in the audience as well, uh, Annie Lay, about how Khmer culture has influenced Southern Vietnamese music. It's a really fascinating question because we've already brought up, you know, with this question of traditional contemporary, the fact that there's all, there's all kinds of hybridization taking place. And we've already mentioned that there are 54 ethnic groups in Vietnam. And of course, there's been all kinds of mixing that has taken place here and Southern Vietnam is, incorporates but has colonized you know cambodia and as you know there are Khmer populations in southern vietnam and vietnamese people ethnic vietnamese people in cambodia as well so i don't know if either one of you wants to pick that up about these Khmer vietnamese influences in the music i will leave it for alex because he's now spend a lot of time in studying mm -hmm. Khmer music and and cultures in vietnam and um, Cambodia. So um, I've asked musicians about this, Vietnamese and Khmer musicians about this, and they usually say that there isn't that much uh, of an influence um, of Khmer musical practice on Vietnamese, uh, largely because the, the communities um, of Khmer oftentimes will remain kind of uh, separate from from Vietnamese communities uh, in southern Vietnam. Yes, of course, there is some some intermingling, um, but there isn't a great deal of influence. Um, there are some Khmer tunes that have made their way into um, southern Vietnamese musical practice, in particular in Dung Khat Thai Tu, um, because this music is so experimental and it has been experimental, um, you know, since its inception over a hundred years ago. So, you know, Vietnamese musicians will hear these Khmer tunes and then they will approximate them um, using kind of Vietnamese musical practice, um, but that's largely it. Um, the <clears throat> there is uh, some evidence to suggest that there is musical, greater musical influence from Cham musical practice uh, on Vietnamese musical practice. Um, and so it's it's been theorized that um, a lot of the sadness in Vietnamese traditional music comes from Cham musical aesthetics. Um, so when the Vietnamese um, undertook the Nam Tien, or the Southern advance, uh, Advancement, um, and they kind of picked up Cham musical practice along the way. Um, that became um, a, a lot of the kind of sadder songs um, that exist in Southern Vietnam today. That's really fascinating. Why the sadness from the Cham uh, culture? Um, because uh, some will say it's because that the Cham uh, lost their country. Um, and so in that loss, uh, in the presentation of that loss um, uh, in music, um, that uh, was sort of picked up um, by Vietnamese listeners. Um, but I mean, going back over a thousand years, um, sort of Vietnamese listeners have really loved um, Cham dance uh, and Cham song, um, you know, there, 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 there's Cham music being played at the court in the North, you know, over a thousand years ago. Um, and so 
you know, that there's uh, that there's just been this kind of predilection for for Chan music for quite a long time. Wow, it's really fascinating. And also kind of sad to think about that as well as we think about the complexities of Vietnamese history. One last question um, for both of you. It's from Duan Zhang Fan. Uh, how, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry from somebody else, I, I got the wrong person. Um, it's actually a question about musical genres. Uh, you know, do, but, uh, Van Ang, do you, do you classify your music as a particular kind of genre? Is there, is there a name for it? Um, and Dr. Alex, do you have uh, favorite genres of Vietnamese music? The question is coming from someone who wants to, to, to know so they can do some of their homework and, and find out more about traditional Vietnamese music and instruments. Well, um, the music I'm doing right now, I would say that is the global music. Um, before we would think, um, you know, technically, uh, my music was put into world music, but then uh, world music is no longer um, reflect what it is um, like I am doing um, or many of my um, fellow artists are doing because in the music that we do it might originate from from one culture like for me it's originated and strongly rooted in Vietnamese culture however I, I incorporate um, many more different music genre and timbre and colors and instrument from other cultures as well so then it become not one not one um, single country the, uh, music from one single country it becomes music from many different country so it is the global music Um, in terms of the genres of music that I really like, I'm popping two um, in in the chat. Um, the first is the, the music that I studied, Dung Ka Thay Tu. Um, Dung Ka Thay Tu. Um, sometimes it's called um, Nhạc Thay Tu, Nambo. Uh, the music of uh, talented amateurs of of southern Vietnam, um, and you know you can you can type this into YouTube and you'll get all kinds of um, examples coming up. But oftentimes you'll see sort of guys um, playing the um guitar film um which is the the vietnamese uh guitar with the scooped fingerboard um and so there's scoops in between the frets so that it allows them to um and. to ornament um the pitches properly um and so yeah they're just there'll be copious um examples of this on youtube um the other music i really like is uh which is the the, the court music uh, of, of central Vietnam. Um, and again, if you stick that in to YouTube, you'll find all kinds of different uh, recordings that you can listen to. So cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for yes. that. Dr. Alex. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, Viet, DJ Puzzle, the production team behind the scenes um, for another wonderful accented show. Um, and as Don also mentions in the Q&A that we won't have time to get to today, I feel like we've been learning a lot and y'all have been showing us so much through your work, your music and your um, experiences so far. So I wanted to thank you for that. Before we close, a couple of quick announcements. Um, Divan, speaking of music, Divan is going to be releasing a music issue um, on our Diacritics blog. So if you're interested in that, please check out diacritics.org and that will be released very, very soon. Um, another announcement that I'd like to make before we wrap up, this is the 21st episode of the fall 2022 season of Accents and Dialogues and Diaspora. We thank you all for being here for today. If you'd like to catch up on any of our previous 20 um, at episodes, you can visit divan.org and then tap click on our resources tab. Um, and then that will get you access to all of our previous uh, seasons and episodes with the plethora of guests that we've had on for today. Um, and to wrap up one more time, one last thank you um, to my co-host, Viet An Viet, as well as Jivan An and Dr. Alex Cannon for joining us today. Um, have a great rest of your night and have a warm, hearty dinner, y'all.